What's going on, y'all? This is True Results. Uh, we back in the building. Had a little official business to handle for a few days, and uh, we back. So salute to each and every one of y'all. Uh, let's get into it right now. Hernandez go man. Let's talk about it. Now, in the last two days, I've been hearing a conversation in, a, in more than one place concerning Goat Band, right? Now, y'all know what we already suspect, but just hear me out. What if this nigga was just like in the hood around the folks that wanted Dolph gone and just by association he kind of put the play in motion you know how you around Juke and uh you know be being be in bigger places than teasing them most of the time and then you hear Juke say well my brother won't uh doubt out of here you know well what if what if he knew the young niggas and just by opening his mouth set the play in motion and just got caught up that's just hypothetically right because when you look at the picture now i'm not by no means uh i say just this is just a conversational piece because that's what a new conversation that I've been hearing about two or three places. So it must be coming from somewhere. But I keep my eyes open and my ears as well. Now, consider this. The family must know something more than we do about his role because the family, according to Paul Hagerman, the uh, prosecutor, okay for him to be released. Not Strange Job, not uh, Cornelius, but Go Band. They approved his $90,000 bond. And he was called the alleged mastermind. And then you hear Paul Hackman again, the prosecutor, say that, well, after further discovery came in, Go Band uh, seemingly not played the role of mastermind. So, with that being said, Let's continue. Now, something funny going on. We're going to get back to the story. That, what is it about his old bond conditions before they amended them not too long ago, I think last month, that has his bond conditions sealed both times. The first time he got released, his bond uh, conditions were sealed. His bail conditions were sealed. He went to court again and got asked, can he go get a job and all that? And they did something that's not available to the public and sealed the amended bond conditions. I don't know what that could be, uh, but y'all can get in the comment section and let's talk about it. Now, a lot of people say this dude has a history of being a working boy. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I think somebody has some paperwork or something. That's not uh, what I do. But with that being said, what is it that gives this man so much freedom and such a secret? Now, Juke, Big Juke, out of there. Teasy, out of there, right? Now, the strangest thing about Jill murder is that being that his brother is in the position and under who he under, Jay-Z, there has been not one follow-up news, cat news report, uh, nothing at all. Uh, and you got a letter of condolences from the president and nothing has been done. Now, at Duke's funeral, we've seen all the helicopters. Now, who they really protecting? Or was this something that was orchestrated by the same people that gave the okay and supported 
to murder a young dog. Don't y'all find that kind of strange? I think this was damage control, people, too. Because to, to mellow some shit out, or it could be that, in my opinion, the whole reason that Jay Z is uh, sweetening up got it is for the same reason I told y'all the sudden takeover. And when he finished with him, he's probably knows the history of Yo Gotti's mama and auntie and the bovans and the dope game because that's the game he played. Now if you look at him with Desiree, Desiree Perez who took down a cartel and now she's the CEO of Rock Nation. I mean, uh, yeah, something like this. Yeah, CEO of Rock Nation. Then what if they was collecting intel from the people and the family and the, and Jook with his one foot in the gang uh, yeah, to feed, to protect himself. And that was the whole play because that's very possible that Jay-Z would do that. Now, Gotti got everything he wanted. His girl on the cover talking about a hundred million dollars and uh, protection. That's all for a reason. And uh, I think that the way he moved up and the way everybody went to the White House, this is bigger than anything that we can imagine. And they had to get Dolph out the way uh, to take some shit over. So it's very uh, high power. Now, uh, Go Van. Back to Go Van. Go Van, let me ask you this. Do you know anything about Brick Wolf Pack? And I'm just asking that because it came across the radar that y'all two know each other and it's out of Houston. So maybe that's what's going on when he Brick Wolfpack popped up talking about he know this and he know that about why Dolph was at the cookie shop that day and, and all that interview and then two days later uh, he retracted the, all that shit and apologized to the cookie shop. What the hell is going on with that? So that Houston connection with these two is something that we're gonna be getting into. I just want to make sure all the ducks in the row, because when it's coming out of the age town, you got to be strategic with that. So those are a couple of points I wanted to make. Uh, another thing, JP, <laughs> you think we don't know about the restaurant, Houston's restaurant, for anybody to know about that. <clears throat> and this is just a little jab at you, JP, because Boy, we got a, we got we got a file opening up on you and Go Van as well. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. Last time I seen you, and you ain't even know, you was looking very nervous. So I know you be watching. So keep on watching, and you just grab that out the air. Uh, let me see what else. Let me see what else I was saying about Go Van. Go Van's freedom. What is he doing out here? Isn't that a um, threat to the uh, case, the trial, uh, people's safety, and all of that? What, what's going on with why they why they just keeping a secret like nobody can even keep tabs on this dude because they the public don't know what kind of restrictions he has. Something going on with that. So um, we're gonna we're gonna um, try to get something done with that and. Uh, that's pretty much the conversation I wanted to come through and talk about. And just to let y'all know I'm still here. So that uh, now that I'm back and took care of your official business, then we're going to get into those topics a little bit more better. So with that being said, my name is True Results. Really just want to let y'all know I'm good and okay before we start breaking these topics down in detail. So I hope y'all appreciate that. I don't like when y'all worry and y'all hear my 
<coughs> voice or see my face and let y'all know I'm okay. So that's what I came to do. Now I got a little uh, little little entertainment or something I wanted to present to y'all uh, that so that you can enjoy uh, watching this shit. Now it's a guy, a black guy, that murdered four people and left them in a cornfield. Like the mafia, like the mob or some shit, a cornfield in Wisconsin. So let's do this, let me do this for y'all for uh, edu educational purposes and just so y'all can have something to <laughs> check out because uh, this is just crazy. And we got a lot of footage on that. And uh, so I hope y'all enjoy this and let me know what you think. I'm going to call him the uh, Minnesota damn near mass murderer, uh, mob, something. And uh, that's it. My name is True. Like, share, subscribe. I will support. And uh, I'll be back. Cash out the other side. True is uh, number two. And let me know what you think about this. True. All right. Let me give y'all a little synopsis of what you're about to be looking at. Uh, this guy here, name is Antoine Ruggs. He came in town in September 2021. He arrived in Minnesota. He picked up an unknown female. He was picked up by an unknown female. September the 11th, uh, he came back to the airport. When he came back to the airport, he had killed four people. The four people he killed, one of them is who he returned to the airport on September the 12th with her for unknown reasons. He then leaves. It's been said that uh, him and this female went out to have some shots at a bar. Later on that same night in the early morning, he kills her and three more people. He solicits his father to um, help him take the bodies to a cornfield in Wisconsin where they was found. And I must warn you, the footage that you're about to see is gonna be graphic, just as a warning. So, um, along before he gets to the cornfield with the bodies, he has he's riding around with the bodies, stopping the gas station, meeting his father, and uh, with dead bodies in the car as casual as, as he can be. And then somebody uh, in the cornfield or around the cornfield area ran up on the truck, found the bodies, the police came, and that's what you're about to see. And then in time, at the time he left his ID, driver's license, in the car with the bodies. And that's the case of Antoine Ruggs. So that's the footage that you're about to be about to watch in chronological order. Just keep in mind, everything you see in order is him or exiting in the plane until they come across the bodies in order. And this is in uh, two days from uh, the 11th to the 12th. And everything that you're seeing is that. My name True Results. Like, share, subscribe. Always support. Have a blessed day. Cash App. Sign True Results number two. And uh, it's a crazy world. It sounds like in the vehicles that he's riding in, Mercedes and all that, and the way he returned back to the airport, this seems to be like some drug related shit. Y'all let me know what y'all think. My name True. Don't forget to hit the Cash App. Sign True Results number two. One dollar.
where we're going to go in right here. Obviously, the male, I, we right. didn't check anything on him. It looks, I thought there was like a hole. Looks like there might be blood pooling in his ear, or I thought maybe that was an entry or exit hole. I'm not sure. Yeah. 